Thank you very much. Um, my name is Eileen Hogan and I am a lecturer in social policy in the School of Applied Social <coughs> Studies in UCC. So I'm going to be presenting part of um, the, these slides in relation to our proposed project. Um, and Tom O'Mara here, my UCC colleague from the Office of the Vice President for Teaching and Learning in UCC, will be presenting some items as well. And um, various colleagues are here representing some of our um, proposed partner institutions. Unfortunately, not everyone could be here because of various teaching commitments, but um, you'll have an opportunity to speak with those later as well. Okay, so just to, to present the, the partners then, the, the project builds on, extend, on uh, existing networks. Um, so <coughs> one of the pre-existing projects that was funded through the National Forum is the Social Commons, which is ongoing and is a social policy discipline um, project which is looking at assessment as of and for learning. Um, and we're also partnering with um, others who've been previously involved in the Transformation Through Collaboration project, which is another um, national forum project that focuses on digital skills development. So this project proposes to bring together all of those through seven partner institutions in total. Um, so this is just briefly the national forum feedback on our project. Um, what we're going to focus on specifically in this um, are some of the, well, to respond to some of the criticisms. So one of those was looking at um, a perception that it was perhaps an overly instrumentalist approach. So we'll talk through some of that. Um, to clarify about the nature of resources. Um, and finally, to speak in further detail about the impact of the project. Um, so just to give a brief overview of the project, um, here um, we have the, well, we heard about excited librarians and excited strategists. <laughs> so this is the excited, though somewhat bewildered, social policy educator. Um, so we found that while many of us are digital enthusiasts, we're not sure exactly how to proceed and are looking for guidance in how to develop our digital skills capacities. So this project proposes to bring together social policy educators and instructional designers and learning technologists and to look at how um, learning technologists can facilitate social poli policy educators in their journey towards becoming digital champions and to document that process and to evaluate the process. So these are the various um, project phases, some of which are overlapping. Um, we've identified five key phases, um, one on identifying social policy educators' digital literacy needs, um, secondly, responding to digital literacy needs, thirdly, developing and practicing digital skills, fourthly, recognizing and rewarding technology-enhanced teaching and learning practice, and finally, evaluating the project outcomes. And I'm going to invite Tom to speak now to each of those. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm just going to spend maybe a couple of minutes just talking about one or two aspects of, uh, <coughs> of how we identify digital needs. Um, so in, in a previous, um, <coughs> previous life, I worked for the National Adult Literacy Agency for nine years, um, and I uh, developed uh, a number of different tools. And one of the tools we developed was um, to uh, begin looking at diagnostic assessment for literacy learners. So one of the challenges in Ireland was that um, literacy learners rock up to a local literacy centre and they present and, and they're, they're stuck into a class and really there's no opportunity in many cases for individualised learning. So we developed a tool on writeon.ie um, whereby we asked a whole series of uh, 33 reflective questions and people answered yes, no. And depending on how they answered, we get, then gave them a recommendation. So we identified a, a thing called a spiky profile for every learner. So this is this is not an alphabet, this is a coined by a lady called Helen Casey in the NRDC in the UK in the University of London. Uh, and the idea really was that every single learner um, exhibits a different spiky profile in terms of their own learning needs. So I thought, well, the same thing must apply to, you know, uh, university lecturers and academics as well. We're not, we're not immune. Um, so rather than run, uh, you know, training classes that, you know, one size fits all, what we decided we'd do is um, develop a tool, very simple, um, and we'd ask people a series of questions. And at the end of it, everyone gets an individualised learning plan that identifies what their spiky profiles are. I think this probably goes to the idea of um, the, the instrumentalist uh, question or query that came up in the feedback, because very much what we're looking to do is is put the learning in, in its own individual context, so not even a, a discipline context. Yes, there'll be a discipline context, but everyone will have their own specific needs. So whether you're, you're a lecturer, whether you're an admin person working within the discipline, you'll have your own particular needs. And, and, and equally, then, you're working across different institutions. So the idea, first of all, was to identify uh, uh, everyone's spiky profiles and give them a plan that they can take with them and, and uh, learn with, and then respond to that. <coughs> 
by uh, using existing um, um, resources. So I suppose the one thing we're being quite good at, we've worked on about three or four, actually nine uh, national forum projects over the last number of years, so worked a lot with many of the colleagues here in the room today. So we're very keen to use a lot of the existing resources. So tellyou.me, for example, we developed uh, in collaboration with CIT and the project they led last year. And we're aware of, you know, of allaboard.org. Um, but we also use lynda.com, we use this, JISC, we use ALT. We'd like to see all of those resources being used. And the most recent project was a project called Transformation Through Collaboration, which ran from um, uh, January to June in, of this year. Uh, many of the panel uh, would be familiar with that one. So we have a lot of resources up there. So the idea is that we're going to actually build on that and use those same resources. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, and we want to just guide people, I suppose, towards the learning that's appropriate for them. Most of it will be non-accredited. Um, a lot of it will be collaborative and unstructured. It's all about networking. It's all about people talking to each other. It's all about learning from each other. But, uh, for example, in UCC, we have... Um, you know, we have an ECDL syllabus um, that's freely available to staff, so if that is a particular need, then we, we point them towards that and let them use that. We also run a postgraduate certificate and diploma and master's in teaching and learning and higher education. I think in the context of social, uh, social studies, it's 90-something percent of the academic staff in that department already have a postgraduate qualification in teaching and learning. So we're very keen to use those things. So within UCD and, and Trinity and CIT uh, and Waterford IT, they will have their own uh, resources as well. So we'll try and build on those things and not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, so I was just speaking to the point there about all aboard, I suppose, as well. Um, the idea as well, if you look at tellu.me or if you look at instructional design at ucc.ie, if you look at um, digitalchampions.ie, what you'll see is you'll see a lot of case studies. So it's all about putting learning in context and saying to people, well, actually, you know, I can t we can teach you the technical and mechanical skills of how to do something, how to blog, for example. But really what's more important is actually understanding why you would blog or how you would blog or how you'd build it into what you're trying to do with your students. Um, or not even with your students, you know, in your professional life outside, outside of education. So really that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell, if I can hand back to mm -hmm. you. Um. A further element of that, would you like to speak to the digital badges? Um, oh, sorry, motion yes. is very, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Skip the last slide, sorry about that. Um, so yes, yeah, so to go back to the idea of, uh, of accreditation, non-accreditation. Um, so we're aware that many people uh, won't want to go back and do a postgraduate certificate or, uh, or a diploma. So what we've done in UCC in the last um, six months, and the, and the transformation project was the first time we did this, was we gave out digital badges to digital champions across, 45 digital champions actually, across seven institutions. Uh, and since then, we've taken it on in UCC, and we're actually rolling out digital badges uh, to a number of different academic disciplines. So we very much see uh, digital badges run an open badge factory or something very similar um, as being the way in which we would recognise much of the learning that happens outside of um, any formal structure. So the, next slide. the next slide as well. Sorry, I should have actually read this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the idea here was that... Um, so someone asked a question earlier on at a previous, at a previous uh, presentation about how do you involve the students in this. We're very much all about the students. So everything we do uh, in terms of, the if you look back and look at the Transformation Through Collaboration project, what you'll see there is that um, the students are the ones really that inform what the, what the lecturers need to do. So in the last year in UCC, we ran, an international, uh, we ran a, a student experience survey. And the student experience survey then informed the types of uh, technology enhanced learning training that we've rolled out this year. So we've identified that in academics and said, listen, the students have come back and said, for example, inconsistent use of a VLE, of a virtual learning environment, is, is a huge problem within UCC. So we're now tackling that strategically over the next three years as we look to go to tender on a new VLE and build training into that to make sure that any academic, for example, who decides to use a VLE is actually being properly trained in, in, in using it. The student union are, in UCC are big uh, supporters of this project, so we um, sit on, on, on numerous different committees with the education officer and president of, of the students' union, and um, they would they would re you know regularly tell us the, the types of um, of training that's required for staff. I think I've, I actually am finished now. Am I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but we designed it together. Um, okay, so um, very briefly, because I'm aware time is flying by, I'm just going to speak to some of the um, alignment with the institutional and disciplinary strategies. So I suppose there's. To a degree, a, a kind of common language um, in speaking to the, the various respective institutions, the strategic plans, the teaching and learning strategies, and the emphasis <coughs> on continuing professional development and drawing on the National Forum's PDF um, or professional development framework in that. So um, I, I suppose, again, briefly, there's some overlap with the principles within the PDF of um, collaboration, student-centeredness, um, authenticity, uh, scholarship, 
and I'm forgetting one. I will remember it when I sit down. Um, so I'll speak just a little bit around the um, discipline-specific ambitions then. So I suppose um, we're kind of cognizant that we have some strong links in terms of um, institutional partnerships at a research level, but far less so in terms of teaching and learning practice, and, and, and perhaps even generally within teaching and learning practices within social policy, although we do now have quite a number of staff members who have completed um, accredited training in teaching and learning. Um, in terms of scholarship, which is the one I was looking for, in terms of scholarship we have kind of a, there, there's a lot of work to do in terms of um, publishing um, teaching and learning related research um, within the discipline or related to the discipline of social policy. Um, another um, key issue is supporting integrative interdisciplinary learning within the discipline. So um, many of our students take social policy as a subject within an interdisciplinary program and that would cover social care, social work, youth work, community development. Um, they're the kind of the core um, um, social science, they're the core programs but also students take it as nursing students, dentistry, public health, government, uh, occupational therapy. So social policy is a subject within a wide variety of programs. Um, so one of the challenges that students have is making connections between or, or about kind of the meaningfulness of social policy as a subject within their, um, within their program. So we hope that being able to articulate um, the disciplinary objectives um, through student involvement in um, digital learning and our own digital skills development that we can maximise that. Also, um, a key issue is expanding the impact of the discipline. So I suppose if the success of Trump has taught us anything, it's that we really need to up our game um, in terms of articulating the kind of the social justice mandate of social policy, um, both in, with on, within various uh, digital platforms. So although we're well-intentioned, we need to develop our skills in that sphere. Um, and, and that's connected to our own digital capacities as students, as educators, as professionals, but also as global citizens. Two minutes left. Okay, great. Um, just to speak briefly to um, some of the short-term impacts um, we envision in relation to the project. Um, I've spoken a little bit about this already in terms of dissemination. We would have participation of a very large staff cohort. We'd probably be looking at about 45 to 50 social policy educators across the seven participating institutions. Um, it would, um, we'd be using pre-existing resources but applying those to the discipline. So in that sense we'd be looking at developing discipline specific resources. We hope to contribute to international conferences and journals so um, those would be both e-learning or technology enhanced learning related but also <coughs> disciplinary and again that's a, quite an underdeveloped sphere within the disciplinary conferences that whole um, teaching and learning um, activity <coughs> um, and in terms of dissemination we also envisage that these would be open access resources. Um, dialogue is a really important one um, again I suppose we can sometimes operate within silos um, and that's a negative impact on the discipline and the on the potential impact of the discipline so um, this kind of project will support um, and, and will find impact in greater inter-institutional um, collaboration. Um, we will have project presentations both in face-to-face -face and online contexts, um, enhance student participation in terms of assessing and evaluating and informing teaching um, enhanced learning. Um, I'm watching you approach. <laughs> um, in, um, I, I think I've covered many, many of the issues in teaching and learning anyhow. Improved teaching approaches, improved confidence, which goes back to our um, in, enthusiastic and excited but bewildered social policy educator. Some of the long-term impacts is in, on learning and learners. Um, I suppose um, because it is a very applied discipline, we have perhaps been slow in embracing um, e-learning, blended learning, more flexible learning opportunities. So, so that's something that we're conscious of developing. Um, developing, uh, the, the most significant thing, and I'll finish on this point, is that it does um, encourage us to, to um, introduce a culture change. So it is about changing ways of thinking. We're, we're as social policy educators, um, reflective practice is something that's probably embedded within a lot of our teaching and practice. Um, but um, people have been somewhat reluctant or lacking in confidence when it comes to digital skills development. <coughs> so it's about 
um, taking a kind of a cross inst institutional approach to promoting that sort of attitudinal change. And I'll leave it there. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.